Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, we're going to be in the, in the fourth chapter of the book of Acts tonight, Acts chapter 4. Amen. And we're going to be in Acts chapter 4 because we feel that direction from God. He's the, bo- he's the head and we're the body. Praise God. Amen. So if you have Acts chapter 4, say amen. All right, we will begin reading in verse 23. Acts chapter 4 and verse 23. All right, praise the Lord. The Bible says, and being let go, they went to their own company. Aren't you glad that you're with your own company tonight? Amen, Amen, the church. Uh, And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. Wow. Wow. When they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. That means God desired him to be crucified. Think about that. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled, say all filled, with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Remember preaching to you the book of Philippians, how important that is. One heart, one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness Of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. If you would look please at verse 31. When they had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. The title of the message tonight is Renewal. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you today, Jesus, your church, your body, your people. We thank you, Lord, for your awesome presence that is in this house. Lord God, you died for this church. You died that we might be saved. You shed your blood on the cross, Lord, that we might be forgiven of all of our sins. Father God, tonight we ask you to cleanse us with your precious blood. Every evil thought, every evil word, and every evil action. Lord, we thank you today for cleansing us with your precious blood. Make us feel clean. Make us feel good on the inside, Lord. Lord, renew us in your spirit tonight with a refilling of your spirit. 
that you might be in control of our minds and our hearts and our lives. Lord God, let your will be done in and through us tonight. Renew your church, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. The scripture tells us, of course, this is a time of persecution uh, upon the early church. And what they did as a result of that was they gathered before God in prayer and lifted up their voice, amen, to God. Amen. The Bible says that it was in God's plan that Jesus be crucified on the cross. We know that when that happened, that he crushed the head Amen, of the prince of the air. The Bible tells us that this spirit is working in religious leaders here, seeking to destroy the church of the living God. And so the Bible tells us under this time of threatening and persecution that the early church begins to go to God in prayer and the focus of their prayer is that they might re be renewed. Amen. The Bible says they asked God that uh, by the stretching forth of his hand that many would be healed. His signs and wonders would be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. This speaks of Jesus being the seed of the woman who has crushed the head of the serpent. And by his finished work bringing salvation and healing to all people who would put their trust and confidence in Him and call upon His name. The Bible says when they begin to pray, verse 31, that as they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. This people, this church was already filled with the Holy Ghost. They already had the Spirit of God in them. But the Bible says they were all filled with the Spirit of God. That means there was a renewal of the Spirit of God in their life. It is just as important for you and I to be renewed as it is for you to be regenerated. A lot of times we focus on the new birth, rightly so. But once you become a born-again believer, as these men were in the early church, they show us the importance of renewal. Say, praise the Lord. Just as important tonight for you and I to be renewed in the things of God as it is to be regenerated in the beginning. When you study even the cells in your body, you have red blood cells in your body. There are right now, one second, every second that ticks off the clock, there is literally two million blood cells that are dying. And as those 2 million blood cells are dying, there's immediately 2 million blood cells, brand new blood cells, that replace those 2 million that are dying. Each blood cell in your body, and there's about 30, there's about, I believe, 3 trillion blood cells. You might check that, but, I, but anyway, it's in the trillions. You have trillions of red blood cells inside of your body. And every second, 2 million die. And then two million more or brand new ones replace the two million that die. Your red blood cell will last about three months. It gets old. And as it gets old, it cries to the immune system to come and eat it. So that it can be replaced by a brand new blood cell. So that our bodies every second... That we live is going through a renewal process. Seven years of your life. Every seven years that you live. Every cell in your body. Are you with me? And red blood cells are only a portion of those cells. Every seven years that you live. Your body will go, to, go through a complete Change every cell in your body is completely different every seven years. Uh, I, I knew a man of God that was in my life, and he could, it was almost like clockwork. 
that he could look at his life and every seven years that he was, that he was alive, he knew at the end of that seven-year cycle, uh, he recognized that his body was going to go through something. Amen. And he recognized the need uh, for rest or vacation or whatever because he knew that his body was going to go through that change. He was so in touch with the changing of his body. The point is that every one of us are constantly being renewed and changed every second of your life. And every seven years, as I said, you are completely, every cell in your body is completely changed. So that you are literally a new person, if you will, every seven years. And so what God is showing us through that process is that renewal is essential. It is essential for you. It's for me, essential for me. Uh, we go through the day. At the end of the day, we lay down and we sleep. And the reason why we sleep is because we need to be renewed. Because we get tired. Our minds get tired. Our bodies get tired. So every day, at some point, you've got to get some rest. Your body has to be renewed. You're, if you don't get any sleep, man, you start thinking crazy thoughts. You can't think right. You're not rational. Your mind, amen, it just it gives you a hard time. You just, your body is a mess if you don't rest. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you don't rest properly at night, you start putting on a bunch of weight. You can't even lose. If you're trying to lose weight, if you don't sleep at night, your body won't let you lose weight. So it is important so that we go and understand it. Uh, each day that we live, I don't care if you're a baby or if you're an older person, whatever. At some point, you're going to have to get some rest because every one of us needs renewal. Amen. You look at the animal kingdom. A snake, every month, a snake sheds its skin and puts on a brand new skin. Every once a year, maybe twice a year, birds go through a molting process. At least once, sometimes twice a year, uh, sometimes even in, in, the, in the spring, uh, a bird can go through another molting. So anyway, at least once a year, maybe two times a year, a bird will go through a molting process where it loses its feathers. Are y'all awake tonight? Last year's growth, if you're growing things, if you're growing plants, last year's growth at some point, maybe in the winter time, they fall to the ground, they drop to the ground, and they're plowed under the ground. Amen. Amen. In order to get ready to plant again for renewal. It's a cycle. It's a process that God has set up. Does everybody understand that? Amen. So when we look at the, the kingdom, the animal kingdom, we look at the bird kingdom, we look at the, the human kingdom, it all says to you that it is important for you and I to be renewed. And so the scripture says the church is going through a very difficult time and they begin to pray and they lift up their eyes to heaven and as they pray, the Bible says they are all filled with the Holy Ghost. That means that they were experiencing renewal in their life. They understood the importance of experiencing. They already had the Holy Ghost. But they need to be refilled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Well number one. It's going to get rid of the snake skin of deceit. See it's not enough for you and I to get born again one time in history. If you don't get renewed in the Holy Ghost. What will begin to happen in your life. Is you'll become very deceitful. You start practicing deceit as somebody that claims to be a born-again believer. You start practicing deceit and lies. That's a sign to you. you got a snake skin on you that you need to get rid of by getting close to God and renewing yourself in the spirit of the living God. Because what is happening is your old flesh, your old carnal nature, that snake skin of deceit, is going to begin to grow. So you've got to get that off of you. And you need to renew yourself uh, in God. So that you can get rid of the snake skin of deceit. You, you and I need to. And I say and I'm not preaching down to you. I'm telling myself that. 
I can become deceitful if I don't pray and get renewed. If I don't get renewed in the Spirit of God, I can get deceitful in my life. I can also have the feathers of hypocrisy. So we must pray, we must be renewed in God because if we don't, we'll start get, having the old feathers of hypocrisy. Give God praise in the house today. If we don't get renewed in God, then we have the rotten pulps. Look at your name and say, and the, say the rotten pulp of self-centeredness. Now, I know nobody here tonight has any problem with deceit or lying, do you? You don't have any problem with hypocrisy, do you? You don't have any problem with self-centeredness, do you? We're not going to answer, are we? But the good news tonight is this, is that we can all be renewed. We get rid of the snakeskin of deceit. We get rid of the feathers of hypocrisy. And we get the pulp of self-centeredness out of our life. Hallelujah. It is just as, much, just as important for you tonight to get renewed as it is for you to have originally been born again. 